Hey folks, I'm back. This is John with another edition of Word for the Day. This is a very interesting short video, so listen closely. I want to start doing videos that are not just about the Bible. I want to reveal to you guys things that are hidden within the, the text. God wrote this, what we call book, and he, and he had a, a, a collection of 40 different authors over a period of 15, 16, 1700 years, over three continents that spanned you know, five to 6,000 pieces of um, bits and pieces of scripture that were found that all matched when they compared them. And um, the Bible has these hidden mysteries. When you read it, it doesn't read like a book. If you if you say to me, you've read the Bible, that's great. It doesn't do anything. It's designed for every yod and tittle. A yod and tittle. Okay, those are Hebrew letters and, and marks. It's designed for you to look at something and to read it slowly. A couple of verses. I mean, one or two verses, like in the beginning. There's so much within that sentence, literally. That it'll blow your mind. So if you if you look at scripture like instead of just being this boring book and you're reading, you're just trying to read it and great, you know, Adam and Eve, there, there was sin, you know, Adam, uh, Eve tricked, you know, Eve was tricked by the serpent and the serpent, um, you know, tricked Eve and Eve led Adam into eating an apple, which it's not an apple, a fruit. And then because of a woman, man was deceived and then we have a fallen world and so on and so on. That topical story has nothing to do with what's really going on here. That What's written in the Bible are topical events to, to give us analogies or parallels or understandings to find a deeper meaning. And, and the Bible says for those that seek him more, that actually read the words carefully. And then if there's a confusion in the Bible or if anything doesn't make sense or it's not perfectly clear, that you actually stop and you take a mental shovel and you dig and you research and you look up words. As you look into the Bible, I'm just talking about Genesis. If you look into the Bible, the Bible is written in Hebrew. So we're, we're English. Our King James Bible is an English Bible. It came from a Greek translation, which came, excuse me, Latin, which came from Greek, which came from Hebrew. Hebrew being the oldest form, complete form language known to man to this day. Um, a lot of the answers I've discovered have been from the Hebrew Bible. And so what I'm about, what I'm trying to get at is there's, there's messages in the story that it's easily overlooked. For example, Adam and Eve. Yeah, you hear about deception because you go into it hearing something that somebody told you and like, oh, it's a book of deception. It's a book where sin started uh, and, and it did. Sin came into the world because Adam and Eve sinned against God in the garden because God said, don't eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He'd rather us not know about the knowledge of good and evil. He said, eat from the tree of life. It has everything you need. By the way, the tree of life is an almond tree. That's a different study. I, I'm very confident it's an almond tree and almonds a fruit, not a nut, by the way. But in the garden... There's a, there's a deeper picture to this. God prioritizes his word by order of importance. That's the way he writes his book, his word. Okay, In Revelation 19, I think it's verse 11 through 13, somewhere in there, it says the word of God literally is Jesus Christ. It says that is his name. Okay, So when you're in the word of God, not preaching fluff and spine tingles and all the stuff that makes people you know feel great and happy, that's all good, fine, and dandy. But if you're, if you're actually revealing the word itself, then you're actually revealing Jesus Christ and who he is. And as you read the story of Adam and Eve carefully and you take your time, you'll realize that Adam means man, human being. Okay, They use man in different forms. Sometimes it's a man, sometimes it's mankind or human beings. But you won't get that unless you study the, the Hebrew, the roots of this. So when he says he made man in, in, his, in his own image, something interesting happens in the garden. So the serpent confronts Eve and says... Uh, you shall not die. She goes, well, we were told not to eat from the tree. And he says, we'll surely die. Serpent goes, no, the God's just trying to keep knowledge from you. He, he doesn't want you, you know, he doesn't want you to be a God. He wants to hide things from you. So Eve partook. And then you hear that Adam later partakes. Eve talks him into doing it. That's what you hear. And there's a story of deception, uh, the Garden of Eden. So you, so, So it would sound like God started his word with deception. Why would he do that? Why would he start the word of God with deception? He'd start the word of God with love because God is love. And if you look carefully, the entire story is about love. I'm going to explain it right now. In 1 Timothy, I don't know the exact number, but <clears throat> the Bible says um, Adam was not deceived. Eve was in transgression. Yes, she was the first person to sin. She was. But who's more wrong, Adam or Eve? If, Eve, if Adam knew what he was doing and he still, still partook, which is worse, the person who's tricked or the person who knowingly partakes of the fruit? You could look at it that way. 
he might have been in worse shape than her. But there's a deeper story than that. Adam and Eve is a picture of marriage. Our version of marriage now on earth is used as a parallel to what God's trying to say. God says that Jesus is our groom and the body of Christ, we're his church, we're his bride, okay? We're Gentiles, we're the Gentile bride. This picture being formed of marriage in the Bible is a marriage between the groom, Jesus, and his church, okay? So he paints this picture, Adam and Eve. Eve is man, mankind, right? Adam, man. man. Eve is the mother of all life. That's what it means. She's the mother of all life. The Garden of Eden is the Garden of Pleasure. When God made the garden, he made it beautiful. He made it pleasurable. He made everything beautiful. We were covered in glory, not fig leaves when he made us. Glory, our glorified form. We didn't need animals have hair and fur. We had nothing. So we were covered in glory. He made us human beings. So the story is telling us that human beings were created. And he created... And he said it wasn't good that man should be alone. And it was the first time anything ever was said that it wasn't good in the Bible. It was up until Adam was naming the animals and it said it is not good that man or mankind, we like to make it about us, like, oh, it's man, not women. Mankind was not supposed to be alone. So he made Eve, took it from his rib, put him to sleep for a week, okay? But here's the real story. Adam knew what he was doing. He partook of the fruit, which I can prove later is the almond. He partook, but what really happened is Adam partook to bear the burden of his wife's transgression because he loved her. He partook so she wouldn't bear that weight alone. A son of God is a direct descendant of God, not a descendant of us. Okay, Before Adam sinned, he was a direct descendant of God. He was the son of God. He was the first Christ, type of Christ better way to put it. Christ meaning anointed one. Okay. Adam was a direct descendant of God. He was a son of God. But then he partook to bear the weight of his wife, Eve, the mother of all life. Remember Jesus on the cross became sin. And he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus became sin on the cross. He became the judgment that we would look upon so that we would see what infected us. He became sin for us. He didn't sin. He became his flesh, became sin. He became sin for us to take on all the, the sins of the world. He did that. He walked right into judgment so that you wouldn't have to. Romans 6.23 says, The gift of God's eternal life and the wage of sin is death. Jesus Christ knew when he went to the cross, it wasn't a tragedy. It was, it was a success. Okay, The tragedy is that we caused him to do that. But he, he was the strong servant on a mission to go to the cross. That's why he told Peter, Satan, get behind me. He knew he had to go to the cross. When they told him to stay back, he knew his mission. He was, the, he was the strong servant, the ox, the olive, the alpha. His goal was to go to the cross. And this picture in the garden is a picture of the same thing. Adam is the first Christ, the first type of Christ. Okay, Not, not Jesus. He was without sin before he sinned. And he took on the sin of the world or the mother of all life, Eve. He took on that sin because he loved his bride. The same reason Jesus Christ died on the cross, because he had passion. He loved us, right? He loved us. He took on the sin of the world for us, so we didn't have to. But there's a penalty. The penalty was death in the flesh. But he offered us a way out. He didn't have to. Satan tricked us in the garden. We had this pure, beautiful, glorified place that was set for us in heaven. It was how we were supposed to be. And even though we don't deserve what we did, he still gives us an option to go to heaven. That's amazing to me. The cross was not a picture of, oh, how much pain he went through. We don't understand the real pain. <clears throat> the cross wasn't the real pain. The cross was an analogy, a picture painted by God. Follow me on this. The cross was a picture painted by God because we can't understand the pain he went through. He uses the cross. Let me explain. God turned his head from Jesus. So he knew not God was there. But in that time when, when Jesus became sin and took on all the sin of the world, he knew not God. God turned his face. So that means G even though God was there, Jesus did not have knowledge of him. 
His whole life he'd known him. But there was no God as far as Jesus knew. But even then, even then, with no no known knowledge of God, he still said, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. He still, in his dying words, prayed for them, even though we were the ones killing them. He was praying for us. We can't do that. We're not like him. That's love. That's love. We can't, if you have, if it was your son and somebody else's son, and somebody said you have to choose one or the other, and one's going to fall off the cliff, you're going to pick yours. It's natural that we're going to pick our son. But Jesus, Jesus Christ, he gave his son for somebody else's son. And that picture in the garden is not a picture of deception. Yes, there was deception. She was tricked. She was the emotional vessel, the female. Why do you think God didn't go to Adam? If, if, if your enemy wants to hurt you, he's not going to go to you. He'll go to your children. He'll go to your weaker. He'll, he'll go to the spot that's the soft spot in your, in your heart, in your spirit. And he'll destroy you that way. So what happens? Adam's like, no. I'm going to take on this sin and bear it with my wife. And matter of fact, not only am I going to do that, Satan used my wife, Eve, or the mother of all life, or us, the church, the body, he used her for sin, but God used her for salvation and said, I'll put the seed, your seed, in Genesis 3, 15, I think it is. He said he had man and the serpent and, and the woman, and he said, I'm going to put enmity, which is hatred. I'm going to put hatred between her seed and your seed. He was talking to the serpent. And he said to the woman, your seed, your, your, your seed that comes out of you is going to be bruised at the heel. That means crushed. That means your heel is crushed. But he said to the serpent, your head will be bruised, and that means crushed. That's the first mention of the gospel. That's the first mention of Jesus Christ, actually. He said, judgment's coming, and her seed, and that would be Jesus, will crush the head of your seed, and that'll be Satan. He made it known right there in Genesis 3 what was coming. But Adam did exactly what Jesus did. He walked right into judgment, and he knew what he was doing. That's what really happened. The Garden of Eden is a picture of a love story not deception there was deception but it's the first love story and when you go into the word of god looking for jesus and you realize he's on every page of the bible every page when you realize when you go into a book you've heard something your whole life but you didn't read it for yourself when you go to the book of revelation you've heard about revelation scary and it's the antichrist and it's all this stuff and you realize if you just stopped and read the book if you're in there looking for jesus christ and not the antichrist you'd realize that in revelation one it says the book right this is the revelation no s of jesus christ period drop the mic the whole book is a revealing an unveiling of what has been concealed in the old testament and the reason why that book is perfect love cast out fear, right? Satan doesn't want you in that book because in Revelation 19, he dies. He's destroyed. He's done. Why would he want you to read that book? The Garden of Eden was the first love story. It's a picture of Jesus, what he did for you and what he did for me. And I'm going to cut it off right there. There's a lot more I could say. I'm trying to stay out of the rabbit holes. But I'm telling you, I'm going to bring you more of these stories. Try to keep them a little shorter. I'm going to, I'm going to show to you. I'm going to reveal biblical principles, right? Big, biblical truths of things you might have overlooked, even if you've been at church 100 years. There's so many little things in the words. I think the next time we come back here, I'm going to tell you something about Genesis, where it says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. The Spirit of God moved. There is something in the first three lines of the Bible that will literally blow your mind. The first three lines. You could study that for a week. It is absolutely incredible. But I wanted to, I just wanted to let you know that the Garden of Eden, not deception. If you're looking for Jesus, you'll find him. It's Adam. God bless you. God loves you. I hope this did something for you. I'm sorry it was a little bit fast-paced. That's a wrap. Peace.